evening, good evening, good evening to all who are here in person and also online as we celebrate the life of Kenneth Sinblaze Berkeley, otherwise known as the Mayor of Scarborough. But before we go any further, I will invite his eldest son, Kenwin Berkeley, and he is going to open us in a word of prayer. Kenwin? Good night, everyone. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to gather here as we remember the life of our dearly departed father, Kenneth St. Blaise Berkeley. As, we, as I offer a prayer this night, at this time, I'm asking that we bow our heads, close our eyes, and lift him up in prayer. Heavenly Father, oh Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to gather here. We ask that you bless each and every one present here this night and help us as we deal in this difficult time as we grieve the passing of our father, our friend, our grandfather and relative. Help us, oh Lord, at this time to deal with the passing of our Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. So we are now joined by the last son, so he will give a tribute. So we have Elon Berkeley. He's going to say something at this time. services, but he insisted he made champ of me inside. And I heard you said the mayor Scarborough, but <clears throat> in the fire services, there's a call me cock. And they call me cockling. much Elon and um, we are now joined by his eldest grandson and that is Keegan Elder so we now have Keegan come and say a few words on daddy's behalf and I really want to welcome all of you who have joined us online and all the children the grandchildren the well-wishers everyone my friends Everyone who is here this evening as we celebrate the life of Kenneth Berkeley. So we now hear from Keegan. Yes, yes. Good night, everybody. So the name Grandfather Daddy, I think, come from me, you know. Yes. I think um, we had Grandfather, well, some people calling him Grandfather, but some people calling him Daddy. So I say, well, if he's my Grandfather, he's also Daddy. He had to be Grandfather Daddy. So that's how the that's how the name get 
get indoctrinated. So um, he instilled a lot in me from providing me the discipline and guidance to work hard, communicate, provide for your family. That's some of the things that he did that impart on me, make me who I am today. So with that, we're going to spread it out to the next generation and the next generation. So it, although he passed, the principles is passing on from generation to generation. Friends, family, everybody. That's it. Short and sweet. <laughs> Thank you very much, Keegan. So, you know, when Keegan shared about him calling here, calling his grandfather, grandfather, daddy. It's interesting that Kia's son, Stephen, when he was small, grandfather, daddy was just too long for him to see. So he came up with his own name, which was Grandfaddy. <laughs> but Stephen is not here with us tonight, but we, you know, we thank God that daddy lived to see his children, his children's children, and his children's children's children. So as we move right along, I would like to call his eldest daughter for her to begin to get ready to come and, you know, say a few words and to greet us. And also, um, we have Wayne right here. So Wayne will say something on behalf of his dad. Come on, Wayne, one of the siblings. sons of Kenneth Berkeley. Uh, I know you have many other sons, <laughs> not only mater um, you know, maternal, or, you know, but uh, we have, you have other sons as well. Um, and Daddy has been nothing short of a father. Um, he stood, you know, for principles. Um, his character was solid. Uh, he didn't tolerate any nonsense and he was strict. Um, I could tell you because I, I was on the receiving end of some of those um, impartations. However, God is good and he blessed Kenneth Berkeley with a beautiful wife, Barbara, who bore seven of, seven of these beautiful children. Um, one deceased now, God rest his soul, and both mom and dad. Uh, but we are here today to celebrate, or tonight to celebrate, celebrate Kenneth St. Blaise Berkeley. He left an indelible mark in the lives of many, and I believe his leg I, I know his legacy will live on in the lives of many as well. So, as we celebrate, let us celebrate his life and what it really meant to us. And we, at this time, will just um, give God the glory and the praise because he has gone to his eternal home. And with that, I say thank you. God bless. Thank you very much, Wayne. So this evening we have in store for you, we have two poems. We would have other tributes. We have a saxophonist and we have some really wonderful music that daddy truly loved. Also a special scripture reading. But at this time, I will call on daddy's godson, who is also a fire officer, and he will say a few words on behalf of or about his godfather. Good night, everyone. I am Stephen Jacob, the late Kenneth Berkeley Pop's godson. He's also my cousin. He was a very strict man. 
I would say a few things about him that you all would laugh, but it was very serious to me. One, well, now I'm a fire officer. Myself and Elon had one thing in common, never to walk under with father. But the Lord didn't have a choice, so we end up walking under our father <laughs> in the auxiliary fire service. That is what. When I was going to secondary school, I went to Skipamish School. My father was working eight to four in fire prevention. He's deceased, may his soul rest in peace. So we had to go to the fire station for lunch. My brothers had to leave RC and go to the station. So are they are watching them men sliding down the pole, boy, lapping the foot, come down and land on the big cushion. <laughs> I said, well, I had to try that. After lunch, a humble servant gone upstairs. Look around, nobody, and I jump on the pole. When I land below, so bam, and I turn so. I say, Mr. Bulk, they take off like a shot from a gun if you see speed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the next day, come for lunch. But the father come and stand up by your door. Eh? Oh, God, pressure. You see that silence there? Jesus Christ, the man nearly killed me. <laughs> a silent stare, you know, yes, say a word. Another thing I want to talk about. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. When I just start to work, you reach me a day. You see, you're saving money? Yes, Godfather. Well, all right, I want to see the bank book. <laughs> now, for somebody to be telling you that, that is not just a godfather. That's a father. So I said, Godfather, go bring it and show you. I did bring it and show him. He watched the book. He watched the amount. He said, there's lime. I said, yes, Godfather. Cut the lime money in half. You could do better. <laughs> <laughs> I thank, thank God for having him around. I have some lovely brothers and sisters. Thank him for that. And... Uh, May his soul rest in peace. Oh, I also have a nice special one too. A day I came here looking for him and he was asleep. I come back. Godfather, Godfather, he lie down there. I said, Pops, you, you open the eye. I said, I come to look for you the other day, no, but he was sleeping. He said, let me tell you something. Don't ever come back here and tell me I'm sleeping. Wait me. So Wayne was in the room, I mean, Sean, oh God, Sean, yeah. no, no, Sean, Wayne, here, me by my head, gone. <laughs> he said, anytime you come here and I sleep in, wait me. Don't ever come back and tell me I am sleeping. So here we are after, you get your instructions. Eh? <laughs> There's so much more I can say, but um, I think I could let somebody else come to say something, but thank God. Oh, this is a special one. <laughs> this one is so special and so dear to me. When my father died, I was 52 years old. Mark, no, okay, 52. Already a grandfather. Come down and saw him by marriage day. Godfather, how are you going? I good. And this was his words to me, I quote. I am here for you. You can come to me. <laughs> Every time I talk about it, I just want to cry. Hallelujah. Thank you. You know, it's really nice to have good memories. And even though some of the memories we bring laughter, some will bring tears, but it's all very good. And as he shared there, he reminded me of two things. That he just had these things that he will just say all the time. And one of the things that he would always say is, when I die, I want you all to get a coffin and put two holes on either side and when you put the two holes put my hands through those holes so everybody will see I am carrying nothing and even though it was funny it's really true because we could live we could acquire so much but when we are leaving we carry nothing but I, I really couldn't get the holes <laughs> 
and I can't get his hands through it, but the message is here. And before we have the saxophonist come and followed by two poems, we'll do a little more tributes after. I just want to share one more joke or daddy saying, you know. There was a time where he would have breakfast downstairs by me. So he came down for breakfast and he forgot to walk with his vitamins, his tablets. So I said, Daddy, you forgot the tablets. So he started, you know, back up the stairs. And as he going up the stairs, he said, oh, they have me like a batchak up and down, up and down the place. <laughs> you know, and these were the kind of things that Daddy will say. He, he was really, you know, a special, special father. And his words of wisdom... It's, it, it was just remarkable. It's like, how come daddy could just think think up of all these things, you know? So at this time, we will now have a, a instrumentalist by Stephen Adiemi, and he is going to do an item or two for us on the saxophone, followed by two poems from Joanne and uh, Pastor Patricia Henry. And I'm still taking tribute, so once you're ready with your tribute, you could just come on my left-hand side, okay? We want to welcome once again all those who are online. Daddy's sister, his only remaining sibling, is unable to be here with us, but I'm sure she's viewing, so we want to give shout-out to our precious Auntie Judy and also to uh, the other siblings who didn't make it to the mic as yet. That's Wendy and uh, Rosanna, they will be coming just now. And they are, there's lots of food. Stephen, you ready? Okay. All right. So I hand over now to Stephen for his rendition.
Thank you so much. Let's have a round of applause for him. That was excellent, excellent. The goodness of God. It's only because of the goodness of God we are still standing and we are still alive. I have a young man with me, little, little youth. And he knew daddy and daddy knew him since he was probably about two or three, three years old. And he just loved Mr. Berkeley. Well, he also knew mommy and he told his mom recently his two favorite persons died. That's Mr. Berkeley and Mrs. Berkeley. But what is interesting about this young man is that daddy has influenced him so much that he says when he gets big, he wants to become a fireman. Malachi, come and say hello. Come. Say goodnight. Hi, everyone. Good night. Tell them what you like about Mr. Berkeley. You're not saying that? You tell, tell them what you want to become when you get big. You're not saying it? So you're making it as if I'm telling lies. <laughs> you're shy. <laughs> yes, so thank you. Thank you, Malachi, even though he didn't share very much. We will now have a poem from Pastor Patricia Venus Henry and... Pastor Pat is like a excellent family member. I mean, when daddy, when mommy was on her way out, she was right there with us. Now with daddy, she is right here with us. It's a real good friend. I mean, they would laugh and talk. And she will now give her tribute in the form of a poem and I guess her words. Good evening, everyone. Daddy B was my friend. He reminds me of my father, my late father. And um, when he's laughing, you better laugh. When he's serious, you better be serious. And when he wants you to listen, just listen and don't say anything. And I just want to share a letter from heaven. It says, when tomorrow starts without me and I am not there to see, if the sun should rise and find your eyes filled with tears for me, I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way you did today while thinking of the many things we didn't get to see. I know how much you love me as much as I love you. And each time you think of me, I know you will miss me too. When tomorrow starts without me, don't think we are far apart. For every time you think of me, I am right there in your heart. Much blessings to the family. Thank you very much. And um, at this time, we will now have a, a song from Daddy's granddaughter, Cassie. An excellent singer. So, Cassie, over to you. Good night, everyone. Um, before I sing the song, I still have to decide which song, but before I sing it, I wanted to say a few words about Grandpa and, well, how he's been in my life. Um, this past year, I would have gotten the opportunity to spend with him in close living quarters and it was both an up and down year but it was I'm grateful for the year because I was able to get close to him and understand and form a relationship to a deeper level with him and I'm grateful for that some of the memories that I remember of him would be when he almost every evening he would ask me he was sitting down right by the kitchen door and you have the view of the sea and the sunset and everything. So you would ask me, hey, take a picture of this for me. So you'd tell me, capture the picture, capture it. And he would wait till I take the picture and have me show it to him. And not just that, but he had a relationship with everybody and everything that he came into contact with. Because down to the birds and the trees and everything, Grandpa was a very open and caring soul and... It still feels unreal <laughs> that he isn't here anymore. <laughs> but 
but I'm grateful to God and I'm, I know he's in a better place and I'm grateful for the time that I would have spent with him for all the people that he would have impacted and for the legacy that he's left. For your mercy never failed me And all my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Cassie, you know, when when the hospital called us on Sunday, last Sunday morning, and we all went up there, and eventually the doctor came out and she, she gave us the news. Cassie says, no, 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 no. It's not true, you know, and um, death is never easy when it comes, but it is indeed a part of life. And I thank God that the God of all comfort comforts our hearts in times of sorrow. At this time, I'll ask Joanne to come and share her poem. Good night to everyone. So this is a poem I wrote it myself and it's called I'm Still Sanding. When the storms of life suddenly come up, and its winds begin to gust. Remember to hold firm and stand amid its immense rush. The palm tree, though it's standing, is its usual poise, will bend to suit the wind and bow to its howling noise. Its roots go down into the ground, the heart of it is strong. An example it is plain to see, work wonderful for you and for me. So even though we may bend at times, and bow we seldom do. Remember that the palm tree will rise and stand again once the storm is long past due. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. And at <laughs> you want an extra rendition of it? <laughs> the palm tree, Joanne, thank you so much. And that's your composition, right? Excellent, thank you. We will pause for a little bit and just to have some of Daddy's favorite music played. And uh, after which we'll come back with some more tributes uh, and uh, the reading from the Word of God. So we will now just listen to some of these songs. And once again, I want to welcome everyone who is here with us tonight as we celebrate Kenneth Berkeley's life, Daddy. And also all of you who are joining us via the link, I truly thank you for sharing this moment with us virtually. All of Daddy's nephews, nieces, his sister, well-wishers, all of you, we truly thank you. So we now have some music. To me, he was so wonderful. 
father and he fathered so many other children when I went to the hospital on Monday to collect the medical records to get his death certificate and this would this would happen every time I go out you know once I walk Scarborough somebody will say how is your daddy how is your daddy how is your daddy because you know he's just so popular around Scarborough and this lady she said to me the usual question, how is your dad? So I said to her, I said, well, you know, he passed yesterday. She said, oh my, you know, accept my condolences. And she said, we were just talking about him. You know, my nephew came down and he was, he went to Scarborough RC school and he was talking about Mr. Berkeley, how when they run away from school and they meet up Mr. Berkeley, he will pick a go of a whip and whip the feet and send them back to school, you know? And this this was the father that he was. I mean, I know we cannot do that now with other people's children, but these persons who share these stories, they have fond memories of daddy because little things like these cause them to go in a whole new direction. And all the grandchildren, they will tell you, Daddy would always be saying, you learn your tables, you learn your tables, because he was a stickler for a good education. And Daddy was really strong, not only physically, but emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. Daddy was so strong that within the last week while he was in the hospital, for his own safety, they had to restrain him because he just will not stay on the bed. He will take off the oxygen mask. He will try to take off the IV. He ready to go home. And he just accustomed to moving. So I guess he, he died the way he lived, on the go. And I would now like to share a scripture reading. And that's taken from Romans chapter 5. That's Romans chapter 5. And it reads, Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us because of our faith. Because of our faith. Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. 
we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And Daddy developed great endurance in his lifetime. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead us to disappointment. For we know how God dearly loves us. And I just want to repeat that. God dearly loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with love. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for our sins. Now, most people will not be willing to die for an upright person. Though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were yet sinners. And I want to remind each and every one of us, those who are viewing online and those who are present in this space, that it's appointed unto man once to die, but after that the judgment. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? So I would like us to meditate on that. Daddy was a man of the word. He would lie down. He would read the word. And he left the word as a legacy for us. At this time, we will now invite Stephen Adiyeme to render us another special.
Thank you very much, Stephen. You know, um, while persons are alive, it is so important for us to value the moments and do special things. Exactly about a month ago, I had a session, you know, and I invited Daddy and I brought out a big, nice chair, had him sit down and the saxophonist was playing and Pastor Pat, she was sitting with him and that he enjoyed that moment so much, you know, and uh, now to think that he has gone on to glory. But I tend to say that I love to do life because while people are alive, it's so important for us to show them love and be kind and be nice and honor them in their life. And we will now have uh, Rosanna Yearwood, which is uh, the first sibling, the eldest sister. So we will now have her come and say some words or tributes on behalf of uh, her darling daddy. Thank you. And uh, what I don't know how you introduced me, but I am the first of the seven children of my now deceased parents. Normally I'm not lost for words, but this is a time of, you know, there's, there's so much to, to remember, so much to think about, and uh, what do you really see? So I will just share what my last few memories of daddy would have been that day when he had to be taken to the hospital and the ambulance came, the guys on the ambulance service asked him his name and he sounded like a strong soldier. He said he gave his name, he gave his age and if he could have walked out and not be taken out on that stretcher, he would have gone. Daddy had a strong, strong spirit. Looking at Daddy over the week that he was at the hospital and hearing him every time he spoke, you know, it just gave life, it gave hope. And what it told me in the end is that even though he had a strong, strong spirit, his body could not sustain him. He has left us many, many, many words, many values, many principles that we would probably be, you know, just going over and over. Well, we have been going over them over the last couple of days. But one of the most important things that Daddy taught us, I would say, is sort of summed up in the golden rule. Do unto others and let others, as you know, as you would want others to do unto you, do unto others. And he taught us respect, he taught us honesty, he taught us to work hard, he taught us to, you know, to have peace. He charged us with, you know, certain responsibilities as children. He, he did not differ in chores, to whether it's um, girls do this, boys do that. We all had to tie out the goats. We all had to milk the goats. We all had to go through that process of, you know, tying out the goats and bringing in the sheep and picking the okras to sell in the market to bring and put food on the table. So, you know, that, those experiences I think back on and I reflect on him being really a good father. He wasn't a perfect father, but he was a good father. And he will always be remembered. As a matter of fact, what I would also say is that I am realizing over these last couple of days that there are some things that I never knew about daddy that I am discovering. I am discovering that daddy planted trees around Scarborough, mango trees. I, and I am hearing all kinds of stories and I am imagining that we'll be hearing a lot more. But he has definitely left an impact on many persons, certainly on our lives as our you know, children and his grandchildren. So I just want to thank all of you for attending tonight, all of you out there, all of you who have supported us throughout this time and will continue to support us. Thank you and thank you for sharing this moment. Let me hand over to my dear sister Marvel. 
Thank you, my dear sister Rose. <laughs> and you know what is what is great about life is that even though at funerals it's a sad time because it's the passing of a, a loved one, but it's the time we see all the family. We have uh, cousins and nephews and nieces and friends and you know everybody just coming together in unity and harmony and i really thank god for that as i said earlier on daddy was a man of the word and he loved ecclesiastes chapter three and it reads there is a time for everything for everything there is a season a time for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to harvest. That he, he was born, he died, he planted, he harvested. A time to kill. He taught Keegan how to kill the chickens. So much so that Keegan, when he was at the hospital, once he told them that he was a butcher. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up. We are all under shelter that daddy so skillfully over the years built. A time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away, a time to search and a time to quit searching a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear down and a time to mend, a time to be quiet and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. There is a time for every purpose under the heavens. And tonight I have with me a special couple who just came in from Trinidad. And one of the things I do best, I think, is to put persons on the spot. So we have with us Sir Pastor Arlene and Pastor Joseph Keynes. And they are hailing from Princess Stong Crossroads Pentecostal Church. And Pastor Keynes is going to come and just say a few words of encouragement to us. And I would love, he's not going to be long. He will just be a few minutes. So I would love us all to just listen to his words of wisdom. And Pastor Keynes and Arlene, when they come here to visit, they just used to have fun with daddy. So I'll now hand over to Pastor Joseph Keynes. Thank you very much, Minister Marva. Good night to each and every one and condolences on behalf of me and Arlene to the family of the deceased of Daddy. Daddy, I must say, last month, the last time we were here, he was sitting right somewhere with his songs, man, with the, the whole equipment situated there whilst we were leaving. And I looked up to him and I said, Daddy, what about the fowls? You're not feeding the fowls. Yeah? <laughs> and so I'll call him the old fireman when he liked that talk when I said the old fireman. But, you know, he was a very interested person. And I showed the fowls and birds around within Scarborough. Yes, they and all may miss him. <laughs> not me, but they will. Because the things that he would have done. And I thank God for his heart. Well, I want to encourage the family and all friends that death is something that, you know, as we, as we continue to sojourn on the earth, we'll always, we will always have that emotional touch in the sense of losing or a loved one passing on beyond the physical. But something I like to say to myself and sometimes in conversation and also with God, this life is deeper than we think it is. And I want to encourage each and every one of us that we are here in the physical realm for a time and a season, just like the, the scriptures which would have been read just now. And I, I love that. I love those portion of scriptures. The man who would have penned those scripture verses would have been Solomon. And Solomon, what caused him to, to, get, to, those, you know, to get to that point of penning those words? He was a very wise man. He was the wisest man who would have walked the earth. He would have been the, the third king of Israel, took over from his father David. 
And he prayed and asked God for wisdom. And God really blessed him with wisdom. And I want to encourage our hearts that sometimes, you know, we're praying about things and uh, we're going through struggles and our backs against the walls and God opened up doors for us financially or a job position or whatever, family. And God blessed us. But this was um, Solomon's position. Um, after having become king of, of Israel, God blessed him with wisdom. And now... With wisdom, he started to do many things. He started to, uh, you know, he hired people, he had vineyards, he, he had people working for him, he built buildings. And, and sometimes when God blesses us and we reach that position and we may climb up the corporate ladder and we, you know, we, we, got our, we have gotten our doctorate or whatever advancement in life, and that is good. But sometimes some of us, like Solomon, we reach to a place where we forget the blesser. And we get caught up with the things of this life. And this was Solomon. He strayed. He had many wives and many concubines. He strayed and he forgot God. But one thing that tormented Solomon in his wisdom, he realized that the same thing that comes the wise man's way is the same thing that comes the foolish man's way. And what is that? The level playing field, that is death. All of us will pass through that platform of death. One day, you and I will die. I am talking now. Maybe I might die, you know, soon. You don't know. That is how life is. Life is like a vapor. We are here and then we're just gone. That's it. We're just passing through. So Solomon began to think in his wisdom. All what I've acquired in life, all my flat screen and all the Porsche, all the BMW, the Audi, and you know how much women I have. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I really lived up all the apartments I rented. I built hotels all down Crown Point and everything. That, that is good. But Solomon began to real, realize in his life that one day he will die. One day he will die. And I want to encourage all of us that he has gone on and he would have, you know, passed this way. He would have reached his expiry date on the earth. And he has gone on. We thank God for him. The memories of daddy will always, you know, be remembered. But you and I, we are here on the earth. This is something for the family members and friends and all of us to, you know, to think like Solomon. One day we will die. That's the reality. And the thing is, when Solomon began to analyze life, he, you know, like he did a, he, he did a thesis. He started with an introduction, and then he had his whole body, and then he came with a conclusion. So then, while analyzing life, he be penned the words, as the words would have read just now in um, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It talks about there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. So important, so important. You were born. We were all born at once, whatever year, whatever month, whatever date in life. But the thing is that, yes, we were born, but there's a time come when we will die. And that is so true. So you and I, we have to prepare for death. We prepare for a lot of things, but we don't prepare. Some people don't prepare for death. We will die. So when Solomon analyzed life and he realized, how come a man worked hard, he owned so much things, and then he dies, and then somebody else come who hasn't worked hard and blow away everything. So all those things started to torment Solomon. So he came to his conclusion um, uh, in the latter part, in the last chapter of um, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, he said, listen to me, the conclusion of the matter in life, the best thing for a human being to do is to realize that there's a supreme being, the one who has engineered everything in the universe, the one who has created the sun, the moon, the stars, the galaxies, the one who has created the solar system, the one who has created the animals and human being and everything, the oxygen, you name it. There's a supreme being who has initiated and spoken things into being and architecturally designed life. And he realized the best thing for a human being to do is to fear this supreme creator being. Fear God. Keep his commandments. That's the best thing to do. Walk with God. All he finalized in his TC, TC sorry, of analyzing life all is vanity. And to be honest, sometimes you and I, the best of us get caught up. We run after things. We run after things. But a lot of things we run after are just vanity. Because we all die. We, we will die and leave all those things. I like to say this and come into a close. This life is a matrix. I, to me, I feel that matrix is the best movie they have made. Because when I watch the matrix... <coughs> I actually see something what the Bible is trying to tell us. Don't get caught up with the physical realm. Life is more important. There, are the, there is a, 
There's an orchestration behind the physical realm that orchestrates things for you and I to run after. Sometimes we're running after things and we run after... No, it's nothing wrong to have things. But when you start to love and you know your, your, your devotion becomes aligned to things and not to God, not understanding you have gotten caught up in the matrix and you don't know. <laughs> so we can live a life on the earth where we get caught up in things in the matrix, in the system of Babylon. Babylon and it can be religion too. Don't get caught up. Religion too also is a part of Babylon. You could have religion and don't have Christ. You could have religion and don't have truth. So all that is part of the matrix. So my encouragement to all of us, let daddy's death speak to us. He has already gone on. His expiry date has reached to this place. And now we as family members and friends around will always remember. And tomorrow is a funeral. And God's blessings and strength will continue to be with the family. But let us take cognizant, cognizant of our lives. We are here for a time and a season. Let us fear God and keep his commandments. God's bless. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's give it up for Pastor Joseph Keynes. And you know, Pastor Keynes wasn't here when I gave Daddy's remark. And I will just repeat it again just for you all. Daddy would always say, he said, when I die, cut two holes on the sides of my coffin. Put my hands out there so that everybody will see I am leaving with nothing. So let's not be caught up on things. Thank you so much once again, Pastor Keynes. We are opening up for any more tributes. Anyone would like to share any tribute or any joke or any saying or anything about Mr. Berkeley before we go into another musical interlude? I'm seeing my cousin coming. Lincoln Peters, and he is a teacher at the Goodwood School. So I guess Lincoln is going to say something on behalf of that side of the family. Lincoln. Oh, Martha, I'm happy that you had made it plain that you like to put people on the spot. <laughs> um... My time where we are now, um, it was home away from home for me, okay? I frequent here a lot. I came here, well, Wayne, Kenny knows, they know. Um, it, it was just home away from home. I could have come here and feel relaxed. I could have come here and get treated by parents who were not my own, but they were treating me as my parents. So it was home away from home. Yes? They will, I will be spoiled, I will be fed, and here is where I used to get my supply of goat milk. <laughs> because Uncle Ken, everybody knows him with his goats that he used to have. So whenever I came here, I got my supply of goat milk. Now, I have to add this is in the 1970s, all right? So this was a while back, all right? Um, in the 1980s, I was outside of Trinidad and Tobago. So, but as I grew older, I came to realize in life that to have a happy home, you will need a male presence in the home. I don't know. Are there, are there, are there other men around here is aware of that? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> you are going to need a male presence in the home. So for your home to be a home of happiness and love. So I, I, I have to give Uncle Ken that, that, that applause and that recognition. Yes? And, and again, now ladies, you know, this is from a man's perspective. It is not easy to be a man. It's not easy. So for those men who have stood in the household, who remained in the household and did not abandon the household, they have to be applauded. They have to be applauded. Yes? Because when they stay there, the home is going to be a happy home. And 
Uncle Ken, as you are hearing from everyone, he has left an indelible impression on many. And as we celebrate, we could really celebrate the life of Uncle Ken. Amen? Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lincoln. Celebrating the men. You know, as a child, sometimes when daddy beat me or if he do something that I don't like, I would be pouting and be vexed and all of that. But in my mature years, based on the word of God, I came to a place of understanding the importance of the word of God that says, honor your father and your mother. And I thank God that in daddy's life, especially in his latter years, I was able to honor the man that God chose to be, my father in the earth. Do we have any more tributes before we go again to the slideshow and uh, listen to some music? I just want to advise all those who are viewing online, take a plane, take a boat, uh, get transported, do whatever it takes. There's lots of food, lots of drinks. I just keep seeing pots passing down, so do whatever you have to do to just come on down in person. Any more tributes downstairs? Any more tributes? Oh, Kenny is going to say something. All right, good night. I am Kenwin St. Blaise Berkeley, I'm the eldest son, the third child of Kenneth Berkeley. Uh, my father became a very happy man when I was born. His first boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a moment in a man's life when he can say, yeah, that's my boy. I did it. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's fine. You know, but this is about daddy and a special relationship between myself and my father. Um, a kind, loving, big-hearted man. Uh, as a boy, watching my father do his work, do his chores, put on his tall boots, head down into the gully, taking care of the goats, uh, cutting dung bushes in the neighborhood. Uh, I couldn't wait to join him. And oftentimes when he's at work, I would step into his boots and even though they would reach me up to the top of my thighs and me trying to walk in them, you know, it was a bit difficult, but I was ready to get out there and join him. I wanted to follow my daddy, walk in his footsteps. And I did that eventually. And we had a special bond, father and son. He basically took me everywhere. And to his friends, I was known as Young Ken. Young Ken. And that's how the nickname came, Kenny. Kenny. However, um, being around my father, watching him work, learning from his examples, it made me into the man that I am, and I thank God for it. Uh, many great lessons that have lasted me throughout my life and lessons that I am passing on to my children and grandchildren. Um, Daddy was a big, big presence in our lives. He was into not just working hard uh, at his job in the fire service. He'd also, when he's done, come home, work taking care of the animals, the plants. But he would also be extremely active in the community, uh, assisting 
in the neighborhood, even assisting friends, like helping to move animals for people, helping to uh, give advice. And daddy was sought for a lot of advice. People would come here, complain to him, hey, I'm having this problem with this goat, you know, it's not doing well and he will talk with them and he said, he would say, hey, you could try this. Whether if it's get a feather, rub some camphorated oil around the navel of the young kid. So daddy had a lot of knowledge over the years of his taking care of animals and planting and in his later years he would say I am happy to share a lot of this information because I cannot take any of it with me so if I could help someone that's not a problem I will help them that is the kind of man he was a man with a big heart always willing to help no matter who it was so uh that, I think, was, to me, the greatest quality that he left with me. Thank you, Kenny. And that reminded me of an experience that I had. When Daddy was in the fire services and the fire services credit union started, Daddy put $100 for every one of us. And... Um, for many, many years, I just had that $100 just there doing nothing. And one day I decided, you know what? Let me activate this account and begin to build on it. And in honor of daddy, I would say, and this is not a boast, it is the truth. I was able to accumulate $100,000 from that $100 that my father started me off with. And that $100,000, I recently used it to do the foundation for the next building that I'm going to put up. Because daddy taught us to build, he taught us to save. And in daddy's passing, I am now at $100. <laughs> in the credit union. So he started me off. I built upon it. I used it. And I am now just where he started me. And because of all that he has placed within us, I know I will build again. And, you know, that hundred dollars will grow and maybe it might be a million, <laughs> but to God be the glory. We will now pause, and for those who would have joined us late on the internet, we will now run the slideshow once again, along with some of the music that uh, Daddy loved us so much and that are in honor to him. So I will now hand over to Kenneth as he does that slideshow again. And I just want to take this opportunity to really say thanks to Kenneth and Magnificent Productions for him, you know, just coming and doing this for us also for Winton and his keyboard and his skill. And we would hear from Winton in a little while as we begin to wrap up this evening's proceedings. And all those on the inside who gave, who supported, and who just came to wish us well, we thank you very much. So you could stay tuned now to the slideshow.
so gentle and so lovable, oh my papa, he always understood, gone are the days when he would take me on his knee, and with a smile So funny, so adorable, always the clown. So funny in his ways, oh my papa, to me. him so To me he was so wonderful Deep in my heart I miss him so
All is at rest I am my Savior I'm happy, I'm happy and blessed Oh, watching and waiting Looking above Come on, fill with goodness. Fill with His goodness. His goodness. I'm lost in His love. Hey, this is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior. day long. This is my story. Yeah. This is my song. Praising our Savior. for them. I mean, it was so good once. I think they should do it twice. Wow, wow, wow. Winton, the trio, Renson, God bless, God bless. Well, um, I would love to have, uh, if possible, all the precious children of Kenneth and Barbara Berkeley for the benefit of those who are online because we are now closing off our live stream. And this is the opportunity for those who will not be able to make it to Tobago for the funeral tomorrow to get to see the siblings and you all just to say thanks. So 
Rose, Kenny, Wendy, Wayne, Ellen. If we could just, just come together, all who are able, calling Ellen, Ellen, Ellen Berkeley, Wendy Ann Berkeley. Is Ellen on his way up? Is Keegan representing Ellen? Oh. oh, okay. All right, Wendy is absent. Is Ellen on his way? <laughs> Viewers, we truly thank you for those online who took the time off to be part of this celebration. I am absolutely sorry that you all would not be able to participate in the sumptuous food and drinks and the keyboards and the saxophone and everything that will continue. But I do thank you for staying tuned in this moment. So we will now have all the children say goodbye and thank you and then i'm going to call all the grandchildren that you could just see their faces so for the purpose of those online we want to just have the faces of all the immediate siblings and then gather together all the grandchildren they don't have to say anything but just stand here for one minute as we begin to close off Hello, I'm Kenwin. Greetings, greetings. Rose or Rosanna, thank you all very much for attending. Ellen, thank you all so much for the support and the continued support. Wayne, and I want to say that God is good and well able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we could ever ask or think. Amen. Amen. And now we'll have all the grandchildren just showing your face. I'm not going to put you on the spot to speak. So all the grandchildren now, could you come as we just close off this live, this live session? Saska, Cassie, Dominic, Christian, Keegan, Kia, Wendy, Nick, oh, sorry, Nicholas. Did I leave out anybody? Andre, Andre, you promised to stand with me so long. Christian, where are you? All this for the online viewers. Daddy's generation. His first, his second, and unfortunately, we haven't got the ones from his third generation. They are all in the U.S. of E. So we have Kareen, Kia, Keegan, names? Andre, Nicholas, Cassie, Christian, Dominique. And this is all of us. So from all of us, where is Saska? Saska and Jonathan, they are not here. So, and Angelo is not here. So in all, it's 12. Right, but we all represent, and uh, we Victoria is in the U.S. So, we thank you so much, those who are present and those who are viewing online. We are now closing off this. Oh, Saska is coming. Saska, come quick, come quick. And Saska would also represent her mommy who wasn't here. Good night. Good night. <laughs> all right. So we shall carry on the legacy of Kenneth Berkeley. Angelo, oh, Angelo is online. Very nice, Angelo. Great. All right, so from all of us to all of you, let's say a shout, let's shout out love because it's peace and love that will keep us going. So let's shout it out. Peace and love. I only heard myself. Come on. Peace and love. Good night.
Oh, oh, oh. 